good friend Google Earth, which we've checked out before. And as you know, here's North America, or the United States, and here's North America. Washington State over here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Here's Washington, right? We've already kind of looked at this. Oh, look, the Cascade Mountains with Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens and that kind of stuff. And off the coast, we have the Juan de Fuca Plate and that sort of thing. Well, what I want to do now is let's talk about this part. This part right here, this flat area. See how it looks kind of different? And it is an amazing piece of planet. And that's the Columbia River right there. And we'll be dealing with that through most of this lesson. Is what's going on with Eastern Washington? Because Eastern Washington has some amazing geology to it. Now, Western Washington does too. And here's the whole Seattle and Woodenville area uh, around there with Puget Sound and Hood Canal, Lake Washington. But uh, let's, let's talk about this part. We got Eastern Washington over here, Western Washington divided by the Cascades. And then, okay, so when you go across, I-90, you see these layers here. These layers are layers of a lava that flowed. And there's multiple layers there. Oh, see the scale here. There's a truck. You ever seen this place before? This is a pretty cool area. Again, this is the Columbia River. This particular spot is right after you go across the I-90 bridge. And you have layers of basalt. That's what this type of rock is called. It's called basalt. Okay, write that down. Layers of basalt. You might not know the name basalt. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But you've seen it before because it's a particular kind of rock. Strangely enough, it's found, that's what the seafloor is made out of. This is what the mantle is, of the earth is made out of. The deep lava underneath the granite slab that's the continental plate, you have basaltic magma, right? And then it comes to the surface and forms seafloor. So the seafloor is also made of basalt. But here's something else. Here's, ah, uh, this is a piece of basalt, okay? You've seen these columns before somewhere? I'm sure you have, right? Well, these are made of basalt. And this kind of rock here is different than what the continents are made of. The continents are made of a granite slab. And that's what the kind of lava that comes out of the Cascade Mountains is too. It's granitic, right? And so granite has more crystalline texture. It has very small, tiny crystal, uh textures and it's also heavier uh, than basalt than excuse me heavier than granite is which is why granite slabs float on liquid basalt that's what the mantle is made out of this liquid kind of rock here how the heck did all that basalt get in eastern washington that's the question and that's the issue here okay so here's a piece of basalt that's what basalt looks like and so uh you know, and you go out to Eastern Washington and you see these columns and these are chunks of basalt just lying around there. Uh, and you got these layers back there that are these giant layers of basalt. That's, that's not sedimentary rock. Layers laid down over the millions of years by sedimentation. It's different than that. And so the question is, basalt in Eastern Washington, how the heck did it get there? And we have this whole different area. Look at the size of this area. It's called the Columbia River Basalt Group. And it's also called flood basalts. And these areas here, it goes all the way around eastern Washington and down into Idaho and Oregon and across the Cascades and out into the Pacific Ocean. Now, this, this layer of rock is in some places a mile thick, okay? Uh, and it's on top of the granite crust. Okay, so it's these giant, huge deposits of lava that did not come from the Cascade Mountains, though. The Cascades make a granitic kind of lava. Now here, these little red uh, triangles represent the different volcanoes in the ca Cascades. Yes, the Cascades are volcanic, but this lava came from a whole different place. It didn't come from the Cascade Mountains, even though it's near there. And this particular kind of rock is very fluid and runny when it's uh, um, when it's liquid, the lava itself. Now, this particular picture comes from Hawaii. This is the kind of lava that Hawaii has, and uh, also Iceland. And here we have layer upon layer of this kind of rock. These got here 
by what's called a mantle plume eruption. Please write that down. This is not the standard kind of volcanic eruption, like with the plate tectonics we learned about before, where you have a subduction zone. What happens with a mantle plume? A mantle plume, what happens is you have the mantle of the earth, right? This big giant, you know, area surrounding the core, and it gets, for some reason that nobody really understands, occasionally it'll send a giant blob, a huge, they call it a plume, but a giant blob of, of liquefied uh, mantle material that will come up with such force, and there's so much of it, it just goes gushing on the surface of the earth. It just busts through in these giant cracks and flows across the surface to make huge oceans of lava. And that's what happened in eastern Washington. About 17 to 14 million years ago, a sea of lava. And it happened repeatedly, okay? Now, the biggest of the flows is one they call the Grand Ronde. Yeah, 149,000 cubic kilometers. That's enough to bury the continental U.S. under 12 meters of lava. Remember, a meter is over three feet, right? So uh, that's a lot. And when it came up through these cracks in the earth, now, once it turned solid, which it did, it, the lava froze in place, this is called the Ginkgo Dike, and that's what they call it, and here's where it flooded out. So right here, what you're seeing is a picture of the area where one of these big old cracks was in the earth that the lava flowed out. Now, most of it is eroded away, and you still have other uh, layers that flowed before that, the, uh, still there. But you had these giant lava floods, write that down, area. These enormous lakes of lava poured from these fissures, some flowing hundreds of miles all the way to the sea. They figure it probably would have taken about 50 years after it stopped flowing in order for it to turn solid again, because what it would have turned solid on the top part of it would have frozen. But some of these we are meters, meters thick, so it would have stayed liquid underneath. And so it would have flowed all the way from the one side of Washington State all the way to the Pacific Ocean. And so when you're looking at the side of the gorge there, you're seeing these individual flows. Whole series of these flows happen over a course of about 2 million years. And so here's uh, viewing the side here. This area here is eroded away. So you can see the edge on these various flows that happen one after the other. And seriously, it's like in some places a mile thick of a variety of flows. There's like 200 flows or so. Now here, it's eroded away through the river valley, and you can see the basalt columns here, but the various layers, each of these was a lava flow. Okay, so now some shrink when they cool to form basalt columns. And that's like what I showed a second ago, but mine was a lot smaller than these. So you've, have you ever seen these? That is the lava flow. And the basalt, when it cools down over a course of 50 years or so, It'll start shrinking up and it'll break into these pieces. And again, now here's another interesting thing about this. Uh, hopefully you can see it very well. What's going on with this is particularly cool. Okay, so behind my head here, you have the big flow here and it would have been flowing to the ocean that way. But notice down here, you got these other blobs. These are a caldera chain that have been left in the earth and they march boom, 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 up to Yellowstone, right? Yellowstone, right now, you might, 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 might know this, you might not know this. Yellowstone is considered a super volcano. If that one erupts, I don't want to be anywhere near it because it is one of the largest volcanoes in the uh, entire world uh, and some consider perhaps one of the most dangerous. Uh, let's hope it doesn't erupt in our lifetimes. Anyway, uh, it's the remnant, the leftovers, of the mantle plume eruption that happened in Washington State.